So it's been a couple of weeks and I have an update on my top octave synth. What you're looking at is a test panel for a 16 step sequencer. Um, thanks to Phobos from the electro-music.com forums, he pretty much just gave me this schematic and I did it exactly the way he showed it and it worked perfect. Um, what I used is a 4029 and the output of that goes into a 4514 and that decodes it and gives you the 16 steps. Um, right here is the tempo, speed it up, slow it down. On the 7 segment LED, um, you see it just draws out the steps for each segment. Um, does a figure 8 twice for the 16 steps. Um, each of the 16 steps are down here. Because of the nature of the synth, I can't control the pitch at each of the steps. So what I do instead is just have uh, switches and it gates it on and off. Then I can hold down whatever notes I want and it will basically strum out a rhythm for me. Um, these three switches down here will shorten it to 4, 8, or 12. So just turn that on and you see it will keep repeating the same four steps. Uh, the dots in between, um, that's the source tempo. So um, I can use this internal clock. I can also toggle it to an external. It will just stop now because I don't have anything wired up to it. But I'm going to have a jack on the back of the synth so I can plug in another Lunetta type instrument or anything that gives a clock pulse out. And then it can control this synth. And then the second dot is my divider. Maybe my external clock is running a little faster. I want this sequencer to strum the rhythm a bit slower so then I can divide it up with the rotary switch. I have up to 12 divisions so I can keep dividing it up and slow it right down. You notice the source is still going real quick, but the sequencer itself and the second dot there are going a lot slower now. Just turn it back up. Um, underneath the cover here, I have a uh, reset button, so you notice it keeps jumping back to the first step every time I press it. I put it under a cover just so that I don't accidentally hit it, and it looks kind of cool too, like something out of a fighter jet. And one of the cool features about using the 4029 is uh, that you're allow that it allows you to have a directional control. So you see it's running forward. I flip this switch and it starts to run the opposite direction. It's pretty cool just to switch your rhythm up on the fly. And um, I have that hooked up to a switch here, so mm -hmm. I'll just hold down the. Nope. Again, I'm using this EQ as my fret panel for the synth. There was four buttons that came in it, so I'm reusing them. The first two are for my two synth voices. The next one is going to be the toggle on and off the sequencer. So I push that in. Now I have my rhythm being played by the sequencer. I can slow it right down. I'm going to speed it right up until it goes crazy. And one other thing that I have, um, I just turn off the sequencer. Um, my previous high pass filter, it wasn't that great. Uh, so what I've done is I, I have one here on breadboard that I haven't put in yet, but I'm going to. Um, it uses a feedback loop with an op amp and passes the sound through a diode and it makes a really good high pass filter so I'll just show you how that works so there's the source the square wave it passively mixes it so it kinda squishes the sound down a bit in the middle but you see this peak start to come up that's the high pass filtered sound and there it is being high pass filtered and if I keep going I'm going to just keep feeding the feedback loop and you see it climb up and adds lots of distortion a real nice grungy sound and again toggle on my sequencer I can play around with this, create any sort of rhythm that I want to do. Showing it down to four steps. 
8, reverse direction, forward, and that's it, and this is sort of the layout that I think I'm going to go with, that'll fit in beside the EQ, EQ panel that I'm reusing.